you ever wondered what it takes to transform a company's brand and website to go from basically cookie cutter into an actually compelling digital presence? So today I'm gonna to walk you through my process for that. So we're gonna start at an audit. We're gonna get into restructuring content, gonna get into crafting a cohesive visual system and then bring it all together on a website that is both functional and beautiful. But before we dive in, just in context, Sabatica, the client here, is a food robotics company out of Vancouver, Canada. They have a patented ingredient dispensing technology and they deal with both the hardware and the software. So when they first came to our studio, find a lot of startups being in the same position where they have basically the shell of a brand where they have just the bare minimum of a logo, a color, a font, etc. And then they have a huge knowledge of their business internally and they do their best to communicate that and their website is based off a of WordPress template and they do their best to communicate all of their knowledge. And they came to us to basically help bring all this stuff to life and package it all together. So through Mod, my studio, we essentially became their design and marketing partner and tackled the brand evolution, their website redesign, the product redesign, all their marketing stuff, et cetera. So we touched a lot of different areas of their business, but when we talk about specifically their website, it's important to know that it's not just an isolated process where like we went, went away and did their site while we're doing this other stuff. Everything's very much a holistic process to make sure that we're communicating the best we can we're making a visual system that makes sense across these different channels that makes sense to their brand and, and the list goes on but everything is just basically done in, in unison and in parallel so i'm going to do my best to walk you through the process building the website and how that extends beyond just that scope so if you're ready let's dive in we started with an entire brand audit so every project starts with an audit of some level um, or at least with us and of course that could look at so many different ways depending on um, the brand what they want how big their product is what they need from us etc with sabotica specifically their primary goal is to get another round of funding and their secondary goal is to get uh new restaurants as potential customers so since we were touching every aspect of the business as i said we were brought in to um, become the design marketing arm we wanted to see everything from a bird's eye view so we broke down their business into three areas that we could kind of audit and just get uh just well versed in so the first one is brand. We want to get really close to all the decision making that they had done so far as far as brand decisions. We got an understanding of what they liked about their current brand, what they didn't like, other brands they admire, basically what's working for them, what's not working for them, but also set the basically establishing the ground rules of like, here's what is untouchable, here's what we'll need kind of convincing, and here's what we definitely want to touch or change. So this is important to us so we can one, get on the same page, but then two, so we can actually easily rationalize all the suggestions that we made for brand. Um, and not just, hey, this looks better, trust us. Then we got into product. As I said, we did a product redesign. So obviously we needed to fully understand the scope of everything, constraints, um, understand how everything works so we could build the best product possible. But in the context of building a website, this actually really helped us because we could actually communicate well. And that is a big problem that a lot of startups have um, is not being able to communicate their benefits, their features, and Put this in a way that is easy to consume for their two different audiences for their funders to know that they trust that their product works and can bring the value and to further restaurant owners lastly we did this for marketing so that's the third bucket we wanted to understand how they currently communicate their business to their two audiences um, how that differs but also they have so many different touch points they have their website they have their marketing materials they have their pitch decks they have their uh, video walkthroughs they have brochures one pagers uh whatever it may be we wanted to get all of it as uh, intake and just understand how they currently communicate it and see where we can improve that. So across all these areas, we obviously documented what we thought was working and what could be improved. And a big piece of this also is just like, how are other companies in this space um, or maybe adjacent, how are they dealing with this, the same problem of communication? How are they um, talking about what they do and how they uh, approach the problem? How do they approach the solution? So that was just getting familiar with the brand. And that's super important, especially when you're touching a lot of uh, different aspects of it. But for communication was really the biggest thing here. So with all that information, we got into website restructuring, content planning, copywriting. Basically, what does a site look like without designing it visually? We absorbed all this information and we got dozens of conversations with the client. We started to put together a structure for the site that made sense to us. So. You know, we want to put them in a better position to clearly communicate um, what it is they're offering, um, communicate their business, position themselves as leaders, set themselves up for funding, um, and also for new customers. So we have all this information. And then I also went and just took a bunch of screenshots of uh, some competitors and just other companies that are kind of doing some similar stuff well. And this is for inspiration for layout and design, the visual side of things, but also for, again, for communication um, and how we can better uh, communicate. From their website, we took screenshots of every section and communication point. We organize them 
into where I thought they belonged together in a structure. So this is just like reorganized current content and grouping repeated items uh, into each other. So for example, they might talk about a benefit or a feature like three different ways or five different ways. So just pulling that together, be like, here's all the ways to talk about it. How can we better package this up and just be consistent? And we got more organized and started to take these kind of areas and put them into sections and group them better. Then basically what started to form is a high level content map or a, a site map of, or what have you. It doesn't need to be anything formal. We're just understanding how these things belong together. So looking at this, this is a overall structure of what this site could look like. From a structural standpoint, and here, this is actually still the, the first version of this. We had the homepage and the product page as two different pages. And that's how their current site or the site at the time was. The, this is the biggest structure change was we combined the homepage and the product page into one. The initial reason why this is like this is because a lot of startups want to separate the company from the product because a lot of companies ambitions are beyond their single product. But I think it's really important for, you know, and this isn't a, a catch all answer, but for a lot of startups, uh, to start off just explaining, here's the product and don't worry about getting uh, people thinking that your company is just this one product. Um, again, there are, there are use cases that maybe it makes sense, but to start, just like you're trying to get people's attention, you're trying to explain what you do. Don't worry about uh, separating those two things. As you grow and you have more product offerings, as you um, are doing more things than just this one product, you can expand and rearrange the page structure or whatever. But to start, we decided to just have them uh, together and have it on one page. So we have this structure, we have an idea of all the content uh, from what they, what they have already. So we started working with our copywriter to basically bring this site into Google Docs. And she's great because even the copy doc, she basically is creating a wireframe. She's using tables to like organize it. So if there's like three benefits, she can actually write to make them consistent lengths and like see how it flows, which is awesome. And it makes my life easier because basically this is a wireframe that's done for me. Obviously super low fidelity, but it's great. And of course, after we got this copy signed off on, we could dive into design. So. We have our site structure, we have a good understanding. Getting into the branding and visual style, we were obviously in a great spot for the website structure, um, but the brand, of course, as you can see, needed some love too. So we tackled it in parallel with the visual design of the site. And just a note, like 99% of the time, when a company says they need a new website, what they really need is a brand overhaul and then a new website, because um, otherwise it could be like putting lipstick on a pig. So taking a look at the existing brand guidelines, we know that there's a lot to do. And after the conversations with the client, we had a good idea of, again, of what areas we can improve and where we can take it. So the initial requirements for the brand was basically to keep the logo, uh, keep the two colors of that dark navy and the aqua as the primary, um, and then everything else they're kind of open to. Uh, but again, this is a brand evolution, not like a redesign. So a big piece to our approach to the visuals was to make sure that we came across as sophisticated, tech leaders, but also super approachable. So for the font, for example, we wanted to find a sans serif that again, really balances the posh tech vibe along with being friendly and welcoming and work for both marketing materials and for product UI. So we explored a bunch of different options. We landed on Aonic and I love this font. It really hits that perfect balance. However, they opted for a free font. So we went to our backup, which is Aspecta, which is a great font. For the color palette, we kept the original color duo of Navy and Aqua. But we tweaked the values a bit to play together more nicely and created two more versions of the aqua um, to have sufficient contrast on the dark and light backgrounds. Then we added some accent colors that were inspired by some fruits and vegetables, um, what they'd kind of often see in the machines, and some muted colors as well, just to add some diversity to the palette. This specifically was important for the product um, because we needed a handful of colors to deal with, um, but it translates well across marketing. Um, we decided to use their blue instead of black just to keep things more cohesive and then use reduce opacities for opacities for lighter shades. Um, same thing for the white. That way it just takes in the color behind it, whether it's on white or beige, it's not going to, uh, conflict with it. Um, and we created, uh, shades of beige to use. As we got into photography, we identified four areas we could actually source some stock photos from. So the first one is food prep and bowl assembly, so basically before and after the machine does its thing. Then we have the restaurant team. So the people themselves, and then we have close up shots of food, so fruits, vegetables, etc. Then we got into product photography and we had a few photos to work with of the actual machine as well as some initial 3D renders, but we wanted to make everything just feel a bit more consistent and more polished. So what we did is we isolated all of them, put it on that beige background and added a bit of a aqua gradient behind it. And then eventually we get some higher quality 3D renders. And then another visual slash photo style that we used is getting more into the fruits and vegetables. So we have a, a style where we do kind of macro food shots. But we also added another element to this where we can get um, isolated shots of fruits and vegetables, add a nice shout out to them, have them kind of floating and add some depth to some specific sections when we're talking about the capabilities specifically around 
the kind of food you'd put in this machine. So this just adds another visual layer that we can use when we're talking about the ingredients that can go in the machine. And we did a quick documentation just of what our icon style should look like. And then lastly, we get into our visual device that really is an extension of a core product uh, feature. So one of the key selling features to the machine itself is the fact that it's modular and it can actually fit into any existing space without having to redo any layouts or construction in a kitchen, for example. So we took that concept and created this visual anchor that we can use across product, marketing, their website, et cetera, um, and really tie into the product. And this is a key visual piece that um, kind of ties the whole site together. So to see how this could come to life, we put together a few examples of different applications. All right, so at this point, we've done a ton of work and we just got to put it all together to actually make this website. So we have a copy deck, we have basically a wireframe in that copy deck. We have an idea of all the content. We have great visual assets and directions. So it's just, again, a design exercise to bring this all to life. As I said before, this process was not entirely linear. So as we we're doing the visual brand exercise, for example, we were still mocking up what the website could look like. So we iterated um, throughout that process. And then as we got to this point of the copy deck's done, we could actually create more uh, higher fidelity designs and not just conceptual stuff. So for example, we started with a darker version, which we eventually steered away from. So after a bunch of iterations and client feedback, we got to a spot everybody was happy with. So we were able to jump into Framer and start building it. And what I love about Framer is that I can actually spend time on the kind of micro interactions, scroll states, hover states, et cetera. So there's a lot of those little details in the site, which is nice. And then as time went on and the client wanted to iterate more, get new assets, there's a new video here, for example, um, we were just able to jump right into Framer to build this instead of having to go through uh, the design process in Figma again. All right, so that wraps up my walkthrough. Remember, every site is different. Every process is different. Do what's right for you, for your client, for the project at hand. And if you're interested in exploring more of my different processes or getting deeper into it and really elevating a website game, I just put out the Web Design Masterclass with Flex Academy. The link is in the description below. I hope to see you guys soon.